All right, so now that we've gone over XML and JSON in depth, now is the time to talk about AJAX. Uh, AJAX works very well with both technologies. In fact, the X in AJAX stands for XML, and it allows us to dynamically get and receive data from the server without having to reload the page or reload the browser. So AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And Asynchronous um, in terms, in web development terms, means that you're getting information without having to reload the page. Um, AJAX is not a programming language, but it's a way to use existing standards. And we'll look into those standards um, in, a, in a minute. Um, it was made popular in 2005 and the first big implementation of AJAX that we saw was with Google Suggest. Um, you know when you'd search something in Google and you type in a letter or a word and then you get some suggestions that pop up in a drop-down uh, and that that was all AJAX. Um, Google Maps use, uses AJAX. Um, it allows us to interact with servers and files without needing to refresh the browser. Uh, it works well with XML and JSON. Now, when AJAX was created, it was created to work with XML. Um, the X stands for XML. But in the past few years, um, people have, developers have, have, a lot of them moved on to JSON um, just because it's, it's very easy to deal with. It's simple, it's fast, it's lightweight. Um, it's not as cluttered as XML, um, but uh, I mean, there are situations where you would, would want to use XML instead of JSON, but uh, JSON is more popular for the most part. So here I have a diagram from w3schools.com that pretty much sums up what AJAX does. So an event occurs in the browser. We can have AJAX run, let's say, on a button click. Um, say you click on a button and then you'll run a JavaScript function that has AJAX in it. So what that AJAX needs to have is an XML HTTP request object. Um, all browsers have this, this native object. Um, when you're creating it, you do have to create a conditional statement, which we'll look at because IE6, maybe even 7, um, you need to to instantiate the object in a different way using ActiveX, which we'll look at in a second. So it sends the HTTP request um, to the server, and then the server processes the request. And this is all done behind the scenes. This isn't with any page loads. Um, it creates a response and sends data back to the browser without the page reloading. And the browser then processes the return data using JavaScript and then the page content is updated. So that's a very um, slim down summary of how AJAX actually works. So like I said, AJAX consists of a bunch of internet standards and technologies. And the first, of course, is the XML HTTP request object. Uh, this lets us interact with the server asynchronously. Um, Java, of course, JavaScript and the DOM, the document object model, um, it lets us interact with the data and information on the page. Uh, CSS is used to style the data, and we can use either XML or JSON um, for the format of transferring the data. We can also use plain text as well, which we'll look at. So the XML HTTP request object. It is a JavaScript object that's used to send and receive info. Um, the, like I said, the object is instantiated differently in older versions of IE. So this is the beginning of a, an AJAX program. Okay, we have to do this. We're going to say if the if window dot XML HTTP request. Now this is not going to work for older versions of IE. So this is for IE7 Plus and then the rest of the browsers. And then we have this else statement um, because if this isn't true, then that means that we're in IE6 or, or 
less. All right, so this is the way that we instantiate it for those versions of IE. We get to use an active X object. This is the way that we grab it in any other browser. All right, so we have to include this code in our AJAX script. The on ready state change event. Uh, the XML HTTP request object has three very important properties and one is the on ready state change, um, two is the ready state, and three is the status. All right, so the ready state has a few different values, zero through four. Um, zero being request not initialized, one being the server connection is established, two is request received, three is processing request, and four is request finished and responses ready. All right, so you may have seen when you, when you go to a website and let's say you click a button and something happens, you may see a little swirly image. Um, what, what that's doing is it's doing that for a certain condition here. So um, let's say that the request is received. Um, that little spinny graphic uh, is representing that we're, we're in the process of getting to number four, which is the request is, is ready or the response is ready. Um, so when we write AJAX, we have to check to make sure that ready state is equal to four. So we have to check and make sure that it's ready. Same thing with status. Status has two values, uh, 200, which is good, which is what we want, and then 404 if the page is not found. So we have to make sure we check for four for the ready state and 200 for the status. And this is how we do it. Um, this is the variable that's holding the object that we created uh, in, the, in the earlier slide. And we're saying on ready state change, then do this function. Okay, and in this function, we're checking the ready state to make sure that it's equal to four, to make sure that it's ready, and we're checking the status to make sure that it's at 200. All right, so then once it's, it's ready, we'll write our code. All right, so this is, the, this is the syntax for a very, very simple script that involves AJAX. All right, and this is from W3Schools. So we have a we have a div, all right. We have a uh, a div with the ID of my div, and we have an H2 tag which some, with some text inside. Under that H2 tag, we have a button which, when we click it, we're using an event handler here. It's going to run load XML doc. Okay, it's going to run this function, and the function is up here. So the first thing we're doing is creating. Uh, an empty variable called XML HTTP and next is the code where we check um, the condition for what we should do uh, depending on which browser we're using. Um, so pretty much all the browsers except for IE6 and earlier are going to use this method here to create the object. If it's IE6 or IE5 then we're going to use this. All right. I mean, there's not too many people in the world in 2013 that are running IE6, so this isn't mandatory, um, this part of the statement, the else, um, but it's good to have, you know, it's not hurting anything. So the next thing we're doing is we are taking the object and the on ready state change we're setting to a function, and in that function, we're checking to make sure the ready state is equal to 4 and the status is equal to 200. And if it is, then we can write our code, which in this case, all we're doing is getting the my div element and using dot inner HTML, which, which inserts content or HTML into, the, um, into this div, and that's equal to the response text. Now, this is just going to be plain text. Um, if we were using an XML doc, we would do response XML like this. So the next thing, um, we're actually opening it, opening the data and sending it. We're using get. We can also use post, uh, but in this case, we're using get, and we're getting the info 
or the content of Ajax info.txt. So this is where the content is coming from that's going to pop in here when we click, I'm sorry, in here when we click the button. And then finally we have the send uh, method which has no parameters. Um, if we use post then send will have parameters but we're using get. So that's pretty much a, the simplest form of a script that uses Ajax. And of course we'll be doing this um, in this chapter and we'll get a little more in, in depth with it. So that's it. Um, like I said in the next section we'll be um, we'll actually create a, a script that uses Ajax so we can grab data. Um, we'll be getting plain text and data from XML and JSON as well.